If you think of, of using biomass as, as materials, uh, one of the challenges is, of course, that, that uh, the biomass components are very complex compared to synthetic polymers, oil, oil based, or whatever. So uh, we need uh, we need real good analytics to 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 be able to to tell what what they are and how they behave on a molecular level. Then also the material properties, not always, sometimes they are even better than, than from, from, let's say, synthetic materials, but sometimes uh, they are not as good. And uh, here the question comes, are we, as a, if we think of ourselves as consumers, are we too used to having this always excellent materials? Maybe we could do with it if it's not perfectly white or, or, or maybe, maybe some other, other, other defaults that that uh, defects that you don't have in in, in uh, the most perfect material we are combining two very interesting areas uh, the one that we are working with utilizing biomass like forest as, as uh, in a new way and and uh, and then we have the side that that University of Turku is, is working with in this program uh, utilizing then let's say sunlight and and, and uh, for example microbes to, to build new material from the Obo Academy University side, we have uh, the, the biggest uh, contributor to the program is, is the Johan Gadolin Process Chemistry Center, and uh, I'm the chairman of the board. Most of the research uh, aims at utilizing forest resources as effectively as possible, either as traditional products or developing let's say from, from a biorefinery point, uh, point of view, new solutions, new products, new processes. And then in the end, if you have used everything else, you can all, uh, always uh, aim at, at using the rest as uh, uh, bioenergy. If we, if we talk about synthetic chemistry, so, uh, so you could actually divide it in two different uh, sections. So either you develop new methods to, to make molecules, or then on the other hand, so you could have also a target molecule. What, what we do, so it, it's somewhere in, in between. So we are developing methods to make, uh, make new interesting molecules with, uh, with properties that, that, that could have an impact in the future. The organic chemistry part of carbohydrate chemistry, so also the small molecules. So has been aiming into to making some uh, some well-defined carbohydrate-containing molecules that usually have the application within the pharmaceutical industry as a sort of as such or as, as a part of a vaccine, for example. So that that's also something that we have been doing. But then then on the other side, so uh, so you could starting from from these simple monosaccharides. So you could end up with something that is not anymore defined as a carbohydrate. So you actually end up with an, with an organic molecule that has the properties that you, that you derive from the nature, and, and then you can utilize them in, in, in completely different applications. The monosaccharide is a starting unit usually. It's, it's a, let's say the glu glucose is a monosaccharide. If you do put two glucose units together, you get a disaccharide. And, and these type of disaccharides are made of mannose that we uh, attach together to form uh, like a, what we call a multivalent structure. So that specific structure that we were actually, we have been screening a lot of molecules, but then we finally found a hit that works act as a uh, vaccine adjuvant in, uh, and, and that could be then, then utilized in, uh, in an allergy treatment, in pollen allergy treatment. Let's say if we are developing a, a molecule for pharmaceutical applications. So then we want to study the interactions with the, with the specific, the, the molecule that we have with a certain protein, for example. But then uh, if we are developing these, what we call smart materials, so then it's more like, uh, or at least at the moment, so it's the interaction between the molecules. So how to do different, uh, in, in our case, mannose-derived molecules 
interact with each other. And, and that type of interaction, so uh, in, in our case, uh, leads to something that we call uh, some type of self-assembly or aggregation. So, so the molecules really feel each other and they sort of tend to stick together. And that's, that's the phenomenon that we are, we are studying at the moment. The most powerful instrument for, for our use is the uh, so-called NMR spectrometers. NMR stands for Nuclear Magnetic Resonance. So that is the, actually the only tool available that gives you a chance to, to really uh, define the, the structure of the molecule. That, what type of chemical bonds you have, have in the molecule and in, in, in what order and so forth. And the research is, is most often done by uh, PhD students or Doctor of Science students as, as we call them also. Uh, some uh, postdoctoral researchers, and, but then we also have master students making their master's thesis or some research trainee. So, uh, so it's it's really sort of uh, well, the group is really diverse, and, and, and that's I think that's the that's a cool thing that you uh, at, at the same time when you do research, so you are also uh, allowed to do some supervising and teaching, and then you at the same time you most often learn much more than than if you would just do your own own research. My project name is uh, Abbreviated Life, the lignocellulosic, lignocellulosic feedstock. And to understand uh, the lignocellulosic feedstock, let's, talk, uh, let's start with wood, because that's the thing we are actually looking at the, at the laboratory of wood and paper chemistry. The wood has three main, main components. The biggest is cellulose. It's about 40% of the wood material is cellulose. Then we have something that we call hemicelluloses. It's not as much, much as cellulose. We have like 25% of the wood material is hemicelluloses. And the rest, approximately 30%, is uh, lignin. It's a very different component than the cellulose and the hemicellulose. Uh, it's a complex material that also has many interesting features. My research has been more focusing on this hemicellulose fraction and the lignin fraction. There are many interesting new techniques that can give us these materials from wood in a more pure form than earlier, enabling us to utilize it for different applications, applications that we could not think of earlier. Furthermore, it's also important to get this fraction quite pure and to be able to separate, for example, lignin from hemicellulose, that you get these fractions isolated properly in order to be able to make chemistry and to make reactions and to make functionalizations that you need when you want to have these consumer products with certain properties. The biomaterial is a very complex material. So that's something that we have to realize that the, the fractionation and isolation of the biomaterials is not that simple. There's also a lot of process engineering and, and process chemistry behind those fractionation and isolation of the biofeedstock. The scientists have many answers to different and difficult questions. We can do a lot of things in the laboratory, but in order to be able to utilize it in, in the real life, that's very hard because then the chemists and the scientists and the engineers need to also discuss with the business people. The most ambitious part of the project is to, to make the collaboration between the technical, the industrial utilizers and the science. I think the hardest part of the utilization of these new biomaterials for new applications is the collaboration between different players. We need to use and understand nature itself. I think that's one of the ultimate goals that we need as a chemist, as scientists, as engineers. We need to come together and, and uh, understand nature and biology and all, this, all the science there behind in order to be able to utilize it in a different way and in a new way. I think we need to be brave and to be there on the edge because if we are not there, no one will go there.
Thank you.